Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night or whatever time you've tuned into. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend is where I, as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church, let you know what's going on this weekend at Bethlehem. But before I get into that, I want to make sure we're not missing an opportunity for those who may be listening at the sound of my voice on various uh, social media platforms, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or maybe even a podcast. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to reach out to those who are in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma or Garvin County, to reach out to those here who do not have a church home. We've been praying that God would add disciples to our church, and I'm sure if you love the Lord uh, with all of your heart and you're in Paul's Valley, maybe you just moved here or just got saved, you're seeking a church home. And I believe God is using this as a divine sign or confirmation that you should join us this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. It's a one hour service. And since you're new, make sure you bring a family member or a friend so you'll be comfortable coming. Uh, but we'll welcome you by yourself or with family and friends. But we want to see you in the service this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. And we'd love to see your face in the place. Before you visit us, why don't you go ahead and visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there you can get to know us. And once you get to know us, if you're not following or friending us in any of our social medias, uh, click the tabs there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and follow us in what I call, or friend us in what I call, Cyber Church. You'll be a part of our Cyber Church family. Uh, but ultimately, we're seeking and letting you know that there's plenty of room in the family here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church right here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. 311 North Dunbar is our address. Again, you are listening to... Heads up for the weekend, and the first announcement I have for heads up for the weekend is I want to encourage uh, those Bethlehem members who have not been a part of our loyalty month classes to join us for the last night at Ecclesia Church. The ministry team God has been using in a mighty and an awesome way. And we're so happy that God is using them to impact the life of our sister church, Ecclesia Baptist Church, my son in the ministry, Reverend Bruce Ford, or Pastor Bruce Ford. And we want to invite you out, even if you're not a part of Bethlehem or Ecclesia, and if you have time, we want you to drop in tonight and, per and perhaps Maybe what we're doing for Ecclesia, we can do for your church. So drop in on this last night at 6 p.m. at the Ecclesia Church uh, here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. It's the old cornerstone uh, building. If you do a Google search, it's the old cornerstone building. So uh, we want to invite you out tonight. We've been having such a wonderful and blessed and encouraging time in the Lord. Don't you miss your blessing tonight. Come on down and be a part of this. Uh, tonight at 6 p.m. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem, you know, as we've been encouraging all week long, putting the spotlight on fasting and prayer, and uh, we'll be fasting and praying uh, tomorrow, which is March the 17th, 2021, uh, 2022, I'm sorry, and uh, we'll be fasting and praying from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Again, we're fasting and praying from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We've been encouraging uh, Bethlehem and the saints of God to not take 
fasting and praying for granted, especially in our day and time at this time. We shared uh, the other day about President Zelensky, president of the Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine and, and he's been challenging and encouraging Americans to uh, give him the help that he needs. And I said, uh, on Tuesday. He reminds me of Winston Churchill in World War II, and many of the figures are on the stage, the same as World War uh, II. We told you that uh, Russia is thought to be number three, and America is thought to be number one or number two, and China is uh, loosely tied to Russia. So we have three major powers uh, on the planet, all nuclear powers who could have uh, a detrimental effect on our world should Christ not return. So I've been challenging you as Christians that we're to be salt, salt preserves, and to be light, light shines dark, light shines in the darkness, and where light is, darkness cannot exist, and as the light that God has called us to be. I'm encouraging Americans and all the people around the world to do what we can to support this uh, effort in Ukraine. Everybody can see that this is not a just war. Everybody can shine that light and see and uh, encourage us to do so. And also Christians preserve, we preserve, and we need to preserve the planet Unheard of human turmoil could happen if, if things escalate and we want to fast and pray because we believe our God has the power to rebuke the nations in Jesus' name. Our God has the power to protect in Jesus' name. And we're asking, and like I said, in the same way that President Zelensky implored the people of America to help and we thank the Lord for all that America is doing. As Biden said, $8 million worth of aid, but we still can do more. But what we do and what I'm doing is I'm challenging you to fast and pray with us uh, on tomorrow. As we shine the light on fasting and praying that can preserve our world, can preserve our country, can, can preserve a nation that's being torn apart right now while the rest of the world is watching. Please, please, I implore you, as we fast and pray tomorrow, remember Ukraine and remember this president somewhat on a closely uh, tied kind of issue. Uh, we're praying for Brittany Griner who we believe is being used as a political pawn there in Russia. You know, Brit, uh, Brittany played for their team there for uh, the last seven years, I learned. And that's what WNBA players do. They get paid a lot more money to play overseas than they do uh, in the WNBA. And she was doing what she normally would be doing around this time. And uh, we're fasting and praying for her release. And we believe that God has the power to release her. And we have a testimony, Bethlehem and Saints of God. We pray for the missionaries. And they were asking for a million dollars per, uh, per person. They had over 20-something people. All of them were released. And we believe that same God that can release from Haiti can release from Russia. Because, again, we believe our God has the power over the nation. So we're fasting and praying for this young lady. And don't forget about her. Please fast and pray in Jesus' name as we fast and pray that God will put a stop to this unjust war. We must fight the real enemy, which is Satan. I told you that he's described as a thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's described as a roaring lion. And as I said on Tuesday, you can see his paw print all throughout uh, the Ukraine. He's killing and stealing and destroying and doesn't have any uh, uh, sanctity of life issues. 
And I wrote the book, Black Lives Matters in the Bible, subtitled All Lives Matters in the Bible. And as a person who cries out uh, for a, a people who have been marginalized, I came to the conclusion as the nations must that Ukrainian lives matter in Jesus name. I said Ukrainian lives matters in Jesus name and we must fast and pray and do all we can to stop this unjust war in Jesus name. Heads up for the weekend, heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem and Saints of God, uh, as we are preparing uh, to head into Sunday's uh, Sunday school, you know, we believe in the power of the word of God. And in order to manifest that power, we must expose ourselves to it and we must live it. One of the greatest tools that we have at the Bethlehem Baptist Church is Sunday school. Jesus told his last command to teach them to obey. And then he said, Lo, I'll be with you until the end of the age. And he was saying, as long as you obey as a church, teaching them to obey, we'll have his presence. And his presence is live in our Sunday school. And we're going to be looking at or under studying under heading uh, living life connected to Jesus, living life connected to Jesus. And this is our third lesson under that uh, topic. And, and we're going to be studying this coming Sunday, a life of trust, a life of trust. We're going to be looking at John chapter 13, uh, 36 through 14 and 6. And it's on page uh, 38 of your Sunday school book. So uh, we want you to get in the word uh, beforehand, uh, do what we've been learning been grazing here at Bethlehem and Ecclesia. Do your observation first, do your interpretations, and then uh, do your application. And I would like you to do that even before you pick up the book, because the book is, is somewhat like a commentary. You remember I always told you to look at the commentaries and extra biblical uh, materials after all that. So do that first, and I can guarantee you'll get a lot more out of it. And we know we have uh, one of the most excellent Sunday school teachers who, who's going to bring out some stuff that we missed in our studies, and God is going to be glorified in Sunday school. So uh, be ready so you don't have to get ready. You study before Sunday school. That's what school is all about, homework a lot of the times. In Jesus' name. So we want you to be ready for Sunday school. Remember, Bethlehem, I'm going to send the codes out uh, this uh, with this video uh, for Sunday school in Zoom and encourage you to invite family and friends. You can send it to family and friends. I would love to put it out in the open market, but we learned the hard way that, uh, that gives uh, hackers time to kind of uh, to set up and to interrupt our services. So we, we can only do it via text uh, and send it to people that you do know. And uh, we can have a marvelous Sunday school this coming Sunday in Jesus name. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem, as we continue in a series that I've entitled And uh, Just Like That, And Just Like That, And Just Like That. You can be laid off. And just like that, your loved ones could pass away. And just like that, you could catch COVID. You could have gone uh, for the last three years. And we're surprised to see people who had never got it caught it, like former President Barack Obama. And just like that, you could be in an accident, a car accident, and just like that. There are many things that can happen just like that. The Second Corinthians uh, 1 and 8 says, we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of the hardships that we encountered. And I, I don't want you to be unaware as Christians in this world that we cannot make our home 
because there's so many and just like that moments that we will face. There's a place called heaven where you won't have those just like that moments. But until then, we're going to have to go through hardships in this life. We've been trying to encourage you through the word of God and to teach you so that you won't be unaware. And I want to encourage you and challenge you that if you didn't get an opportunity, because we didn't do the Zoom live, Bethlehem, if you didn't get an opportunity, or thanks to God, if you didn't get an opportunity to listen to this word from yesterday, I think it is an awesome word that gives a unique point of view entitled, and just like this, Elisha blasts off. He blasts off the scene. And Elisha's response was like a death. And we use that to encourage people that some of the most detrimental things that we go through in life is not death, but sometimes it's separation. And even death represents separation. And I began to talk about uh, things like uh, a separation or divorce, uh, and look at it from the standpoint of the women and children who are separated. As we notice, as I said, the devil has the paw print of uh, killing, stealing, and destroying. He's the, he's destroying families now. They're separating. Women and children are running out of the country. Over three million people. He's separating, and that's stressful in and of itself to be separated from your husband. To be separated. Uh, with your children, by yourself. And you, many of you single mothers know what it's like to be separated, not have the help that you could have, to be separated from your family. You could, you could be in a marriage, but separated from your family in another state and not have the help that you could have if you were with your family, but because you're separated. Some of the hardest things. I wrote the book uh, that's coming out this year about uh, coming out this month about uh, loneliness. And many times loneliness is one of those serious issues of separation. And many times you feel the most lonely. Uh, I shared in the book, when you, uh, when you leave school, you're leaving everybody and everything you know, know behind. And usually you go into a city where you don't know anybody. You're not going back home many times and you're separated and you have to deal with the struggles of being separate. So I want you to pick up that word. It's an awesome word from yesterday. And if you didn't, it's in the pastor's checks, or you can go on Facebook and click the links. And from uh, last night's uh, live, I uh, did a Zoom live around 9 p.m. last night. And with the information or the comments, you need to click more so you can get go down in the comments and be able to click the, the YouTube link or the uh, podcast link. You need to go down and get, you need to get into this word. But we're almost halfway through and uh, we've dealt with some incredible words. And uh, tonight we're going to deal with a devotional thought as we hit that halfway point on Sunday. And just like that, John uh, was beheaded. And just like that, John was um, beheaded. And let me get this brief devotional thought as we always try to give a word on Thursday because somebody can't wait. Maybe a Bethlehem member, you just can't wait to Sunday. Somebody's listening to the sound of my voice who, by God's sovereignty, you've reached this point. He wants to reach you. Uh, through uh, this devotional thought, and later you can tap into Sunday, uh, this word online or through our podcast. And I encourage you, if you want to stay up, uh, visit our YouTube page, which you can get at our website or our Facebook page, which has links to the YouTube or links to the podcast. And if you subscribe to that, these messages will come straight to you and you won't have to uh, be all out. You can get it uh, when it's first released. So, but we're gonna look at this coming Sunday, uh, Matthew 14, five and 11. Let me read this, five through 11. Let me read this now. It says, Herod uh, wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people. 
because they considered John a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod as so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me or give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oath and his dinner guests, he ordered that her request be granted and had John the Baptist beheaded in prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. And just like that, John was beheaded. You know, saints of God and Bethlehem, I, I really struggle because I want this series to be a great encouragement for people who are going through a hard time. And I was struggling with this thing because I'm like, Lord, where does the encouragement come from? And knowing that over a trivial thing, John wasn't beheaded because of politics, he was beheaded because of a dance. And if I was teaching and preaching, um, to young people today, I would say that that girl had uh, bands, uh, or Herod had bands to make her dance. And, and if I was speaking to young people, I would say she dropped it like it hot, it was hot, and oh, Herod was so pleased, like uh, the brothers in in the dance clubs. And I've never been to a, a dance club. And I've never thrown my money away like that. You wouldn't, they wouldn't want me to be there because I wouldn't throw my money away. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I'm too cheap. <laughs> Sometimes I say the Lord kind of spares me because I'm too cheap. <laughs> Not that I'm I'm too holy. <laughs> but he was he was showing out for his friends. He was making it rain. And he made it rain an oath that he wished he could take back an oath that, that had to make him cross his own fears, an oath that would enable him to uh, kill a man of God that he knew was a prophet. And, and because he was pleased and he was loose-lipped, he made a promise that he, he, he had to keep because it was in front of uh, all of his friends and his buddies, and he didn't want to look bad. And as a result, this man of God, this dignified man of God was put to death in an undignified way. He, and just like that, John was beheaded. And this, this messes me up. This was John. And because the little old girl could move her hips, he lost his life. Woo. He lost his life. And he died in an undignified way. But what God taught me uh, just through this, and then I preached about John many times, but what God taught me in this round of preaching about John was that John was a forerunner of Christ. And we knew that in life. Okay, and we know what he said when he saw Jesus Christ, and we know he said that I must decrease and he must increase uh, as a forerunner. He was born to be a forerunner of Christ in life, but don't you know he was born to be a forerunner of Christ, not only in life, but in death. Jesus talked about how he must suffer as John suffered. He was a forerunner. So in the midst of all this nastiness, all this tribal uh, uh, pursuits that got the holy man killed, 
Ah, we see that he was still the forerunner of Jesus Christ, that it was God's plan that he died as a forerunner for the way that Jesus would die in an undignified way. Because we're going to talk about, and just like that, Jesus died. You mean the son of God? But he didn't die over trivial matters. He, he, he died for the sins of the world. And that's what that's the encouragement I want to bring you today, that John was a forerunner to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ would die in a same kind of undignified way, but he wouldn't die because of trivial matters. He would die to, to be the cost of the sins of the world. People, we've been kind of warning you and telling you, hey, now, we, none of us really know when Jesus Christ is going to return. But uh, every once in a while in history, it seems that all the players line up to where it seems like it could be the beginning of the end of the world. And for Christians, uh, we're waiting for that trumpet to sound because uh, we believe that Jesus is going to come back uh, oh, before the great tribulation. And we're waiting for that trumpet to sound. And if that trumpet sounds and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you will be in a book. Uh, uh, and like a book entitled, you will be left behind. And if you're not saved, you need to look at that movie, Left Behind. You'll be left behind. And I don't want you to be left behind. Uh, even people in the church don't want you to be left behind because some people uh, was raised in church, but they weren't born in church. You must be born again. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, if you've never prayed the prayer uh, saying uh, something similar as this, Jesus Christ, come into my heart, come into my life. I believe that you're God's only son, and I believe that you died for the sins of the world, and I believe that you died and you was buried and that you were raised again on the third day. If you never prayed that prayer for yourself, I want you to pray that right now in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, I want to lead you right now. I'm going to first pray a prayer, and then I'm going to uh, give an example of the prayer of salvation. Father God, we come right now, Lord, in a time that is very uncertain, a time that could be the end time, a time... Ah, that your trumpet could sound and the, and the dead in Christ will rise first and those of us who remain alive will be caught up in an instant in the twinkling of an eye and we shall forever be with him. Father, we're concerned about those who do not know Jesus Christ. And we're praying, Father, that right now that this is a divine appointment for people to get saved. Because many times, Lord, you, you use circumstances in our lives those ju in just like that moments to get our attention where you can speak to us to where we can hear you. And, and, and I'm praying, Father, that the people will hear those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you are listening at the sound of my voice and you do not know him, I want you to pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I do believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I do believe that you died for my sins. I do believe that you were raised again on the third day, and I do believe today that I am saved because of what I believe. Jesus, come and metamorphosize my life well, your word says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Make me over new metaphor, metamorphosize my life. I give my will up for your will. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer for the first time, you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, Garvin County, uh, we want to see you right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar, right here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, the heart, Paul's Valley. 
we want to see you this Sunday. I said, I want to see you this Sunday. See, as a visitor, I can try to encourage you to come. But as a Christian, I can demand that you come because you've been born into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And if you are not in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and I want you to make this pilgrimage one day to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, to the Bethlehem Baptist Church, but until then, you need to find a church home. We're going to be praying that you find a church home. You cannot live this Christian life on your own. You have to be a part of, of the body of Christ, what we call the body of Christ. And there's some local believers that we're praying that you get connected to so you can grow up and mature in the things of God. Well, Bethlehem, I want to thank you for listening tonight. And as always, we want to challenge you, and encourage you to stay connected, to stay connected. And as you stay connected, you'll stay connected to God's person. You stay connected to God's precepts. And that's what we're teaching tonight uh, at Ecclesia, uh, the importance of connection through prayer and the, the study of God's word. That's the connection to God's person and God's precept. And also I want you to be connected to God's people. That's why I'm encouraging you to come out. If I am, you're missing a blessing. If you're not a part of the fellowship, you may have sat through uh, the same information, but it's really not the same. It's different. And there's a different fellowship that's going on and we want you to be a part of that it would encourage your heart mind and soul in christ jesus but stay connected to god's people tonight or we want to see you in sunday school or in sunday service uh so we just want to challenge you to stay connected stay connected i want to thank you once again for listening and may god bless you and keep you is my prayer